Hello viewers, welcome to our today's lesson, the unit is Methods of Teaching Science, BC 4212. I'm teacher Kamaubi, as you can see on the screen. Direct to our lesson, we are dealing with classroom management. Classroom is a learning environment, not necessarily the four walls of the classroom or the structure. It is where you're having more than 10 learners who, want to, who are in the intention of learning. Management has to do with the control, how you are administering your class, and in this case, you as a teacher, you are the manager of that particular class, that particular learning environment. So, as a teacher, you are required to have some skills so that you may control your class well, so that you may administer your class well, so that you may run your class well, because as a teacher, you are a facilitator of learning. What matters in class is learning, not really teaching. So any teacher who is just a teacher will do a lot of work with very little input, uh, output. But if you are a facilitator of learning, you realize that your output is very magnified and even like your work. Otherwise, back to my point here, Teaching is a social activity. You interact with the learners. So you must know them by their names. That is one of the aspects whereby you capture their interest even in your own self. Master your class size. Some classes are big, others are moderate, others are small. And basically, to some extent, you may have no control of your class size. And as a teacher, you must make sure every learner in that class, because they matter, they have learned whatever it is that you wanted them to learn. And that is why by the end of the lesson, you must tell yourself genuinely, honestly, in a reflection that whether your objectives were achieved or not, that is what will mark your success. Look at the space where you are conducting your learning. You are a facilitator of learning. So that is very key because the more conducive the environment, the more good time you're going to have, even for the health of the children. Let's see. As a teacher and as a classroom manager, you need some skills that are going to help you facilitate this learning with a lot of ease, with a lot of success. And this is what is going to mark how effective are you as a teacher. The teacher's effectiveness is basically based on how much have your content been learned, how much learning has taken place in these children. So whatever it is that you are doing here, you come in very key because for sure there are five aspects that you are going to realize that are very key in your teaching. The first one is you as a teacher, you have your own features. The second one is managing the movement in that learning environment. The third one is group focus. How much are you having that group of learners interact? Because learning is a social activity. Classroom organization, are they learning as individuals? Are they learning as groups? Are they learning as a whole class organization? And lastly, and most importantly, it is a classroom discipline. Today, we are going to focus a lot on the characteristics of this person whom I'm calling effective teacher, and in this case, in science subject. As a teacher, you fail in these particular aspects, then you are out of the game alertness. How much are you able to see as a teacher what every particular learner is doing? What every particular learner is saying? What every particular learner is not doing? Remember at your objectives you say by the end of the lesson the learner is able to. Learner, not learners. Meaning every one of the individual children there will always matter. So your alertness matter, 
in fact, matters to every other learner because you are the one to make them do. They are just learners. You are the one to condition them. And that's why when you set yourself whereby you are keen on whatever is happening to every one of them, then you are going to achieve every one of your objectives to each and every one of them. Look at enthusiasm. This is where as a teacher, you are cunningly identifying children with misbehavior promptly. Mark my word cunningly. Interpret it positively. Because you are a mentor in that class. You are not a monitor. So my cunning here is coming in as whoever is misbehaving, he is not a demon. She is not a demon. They are just being children. But again, for you to achieve your objectives, they must be focused. Meaning, here as a teacher, you must come in in a very cunning manner to make sure you are redirecting them. They have a lot of energy. They have a lot of short concentration span and a lot of growing of purpose. Meaning, they are not doing whatever they are doing because they are not interested in whatever you are saying. But because they are just short in their concentration span. Overseeing, as a teacher, how strategic are you? Do you sit somewhere where you can see the whole class all at a glance? Mark me, all at a glance. This means even whatever activities that could be going underground with the children, that could be hazardous, you are going to be in control. And when I'm talking of overseeing, it means you're even going to curb some of these Accusations that are going to come from some of them. Teacher who you anafanya, teacher who you anafanya. And you as an overseer, when you do it for your own self, even without those reportings and all that, you are going to be in control, even on the measure to administer. Some of them may not be verbal, some can be non-verbal. And basically you are going to have a calm learning environment in your classes. Engagement here is an aspect that is now putting you into close contact with your learner and this just through the eye contact. The eye contact is going to prompt your learners. The eye contact is going to kind of even provoke them to think more of what you are talking about and even to suppress some behaviors that may not be becoming with your learners. So there are some of them when you look at them, they'll realize it's like teacher meniona. The teacher has seen me on what I was doing. And if he was not in the right, you realize again he has shaped the behavior. So as a teacher, the aspect of engagement at times it may not be necessarily where you are appointing them to respond to a question or something, but you are just engaging them to work with you. This is a class that is running in terms of learning. So these are the dynamics we are talking about. You lose one of it, then you lose the whole lesson. Look at the BB viewing. By BB, I mean Blackboard. In my case, I have a slide. In my case, I have a monitor. But I want you to imagine if I would be standing here, and again, I'm expecting you to view what is on my screen. It would be so impossible. So, whatever I would be talking is not whatever you'd be seeing. So, I'd be minimizing the multisensory aspect of learning, whereby as I'm teaching, now you can see. So, you can hear me, you can see. By the time I kind of block it, I have just left with the only option of listening to me. And by the end of the day, you may even lose interest because some of you are visual learners. What you see sticks more. Best to appreciate is that some of your audio learners, what I say sticks more. So, in the classroom scenario, I would propose when you are writing, I'm kind of appreciating that your blackboards are somewhere raised. So, when you are writing, you are writing overhead. Whatever you are writing, everybody can see it. But when it comes to where your level can block, then when you subside, everybody gonna be with you. So, BB viewing is very important. Whether learners can read differently whatever you are reading or you're writing, 
or not. Look at what we are calling interacting. As a teacher, there are three levels of interaction that you should ensure. Interaction level number one is you as a teacher with your learners. Interaction number two is how you are letting these learners interact with the learning materials. You can see mine. Interaction number three is how you allow them to interact one with the other. So that one gives them maximum hands-on experience on whatever you are doing. Remember, you are a facilitator of learning. Some can learn the same concepts you are teaching better from their colleagues more than from you as a teacher. And that's a fact we must appreciate. On overlapping, my classes are early childhood classes and primary school classes. So you are sure more often than not, just as, we, just as we have it in high school and elsewhere, you must be somebody who can multitask. And that is what I'm saying. There are some tasks you could be performing and then you realize there are some others that are calling and that is what I'm calling overlapping. There's no one of it that you can ignore. You are helping one here, then something crops up here, or somebody is just consulting from this side in terms of the learners. You realize you must be alert to all of them. You must be responsive to all of them. So by the end of it, you realize things are just moving Whereas you are one, but you are maximizing a lot of whatever it is that you're presenting. Capturing the attention. Attention here is something we cannot take for granted. It is a cognitive resource. When learners are being attentive to you, it means they are giving you all their minds, all their minds. Meaning, as a teacher, if you lose the learner's attention, then they are not going to capture or decode the message that you want to send to them. This means, whatever it is that you are saying to them, it will be something different. So you could be a noisemaker. But when somebody is attentive to you, when these learners are attentive to you, they get to understand whatever you are saying. This understanding will be brought about by when they are interested in whatever you are saying and they become part of it. And this is where we can always have a teacher talking, but not communicating. Talking and communicating tends to be two different things, especially in a learning environment. When learners get attentive to you, yes, it is by their choice, but remember in that classroom you are having different personalities of these learners. Where am I so much on the capturing of the attention? Because it is very key. Different personalities will dictate different concentration spans, different concentration styles, and different concentration endurance. But the minute all get attended to you, then whatever it is that you are delivering will be meaningful. A teacher can do the capturing of attention of the learners through various ways. And in this case, I've just captured directing a question to a child whom you have realized he has been dis distracted. Being distracted means he has either gone to self-absorption some will even get to them sucking. Others will get to some mischief to their neighbors. Others will get to some other external stimulus, and they pay attention to the same. Altogether, this tells you their minds are operational and they are functional. But here in this case, as a teacher, what is this that you are going to do so that you may bring in this distracted child? you may pose a question. Number two, you may bring in an energizer. Number three, you may bring in an, an activity whereby it is one of them who is going to bring it up, and this could be a person who is either of their interest or whoever was distracted. So, 
posing a question to an individual kid may not be everything. But what we are telling you is that these kids, as many as they are, their concentration span is short. It's only that they are varied. This concentration span is varied. Whoever they are in terms of the match they can get fixed to you is varied. But as a teacher, other than the normal and the average way of capturing the attention of the learners, how much more can you vary that and more so become more interesting? Well, I'm imagining I am in science. I am teaching a lesson on sensory organs. So in this case, is it only the wrapping of my material on the screen as we can see that I expect to capture the attention of my learners? Mm -hmm. To me, no. Not unless you're a mechanical teacher. Remember, as a teacher, you are facilitating learning. But if you are mechanical, well and good. If it serves you well, <laughs> I have no problem. But what we are saying here is, how much interesting as, are you as a teacher? Oh, be careful, little children, what you see. What you see. They are the ones now responding to whatever I'm singing. Oh, be careful, little children, what you see. What you see, for our Father up above is watching us in love. Oh, be careful, little children, what you see. Listen to them as they're saying, what you see. They want to see what next am I going to say that is going to be of interest to them. And as they are backing their teacher, they are there. Oh, be careful, little children, what you taste. What do you expect from them? you test and they are very happy remember majority of them they are at good teacher a good boy good girl level remember as a teacher you are to their level so if you are not level appropriate then mm, expect also a good teacher from them okay let's go together oh be careful little children what you hear what you hear Oh, be careful, little children, what you hear, what you hear. For our Father up above is watching us in love. Oh, be careful, little children, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little children, what you smell. Especially at a time like now, a time of coronavirus. Let's go together. Oh, be careful, little children, what you smell. What is now? For our Father up above is watching us in love. Oh, be careful, little children, what you smell. What other sensory organ are we left with? Mm -hmm. Good. So, whatever I mean here by capturing the attention of these learners, this is a basis of the forming of their mind, what do I call it? Perception of who you are. When they brand, uh, they brand you an interesting teacher, you'll be an interesting teacher. When they brand you a boring teacher, for sure you'll be a boring teacher, not by choice, but because according to them, you're just a boring teacher. So when they brand you an interesting teacher, your effectiveness starts from there. So basically what I'm saying here is capturing the attention of the learners. It is the key of everything or it is the center of every concept that you're teaching in your classroom. Look at affirming. These are the learners. You are teaching 40 of them. Or they could even more, be more. I know, remember, you are intended to capture every attention activity of the learner. And here it is that you are teaching and you want every now learner to be with you. This means you could be attending to one. Some others could be uh, raising up their hands or doing something to let you know that they are with you and they would like to respond to whatever it is that you are saying. Affirming here, you are just approving their volunteering. 
even if you're not going to appoint them, then let them know the teacher has recognized that I'm a good boy. I am with him. I'm a good girl. I'm with him or her. So by affirming, you may not have a chance to hear every one of them. But what you're telling them is that we are in one class. Keep it up. Look at gesturing. It is on the same point of affirming. But in this case, on gesturing, this is where as a teacher, you are working so carefully not to distract your own class. Remember in the classroom, learners learn more than doing, uh, in doing than hearing. Meaning what? Whatever it is, the activities you have given them, it is of most importance than whatever one of them could be doing that is not in line with whatever you are teaching. So a boy or a girl could be misbehaving somewhere. How do you go cautioning them so that uh, they may behave and without distracting the rest? Remember all the rest are so much interested to see. What are the consequences of doing right with the teacher? What are the consequences of doing wrong to the teacher? So when you point out and you distract all of them to answer a particular child, they want to see how much are you going kind of now to offer or to issue as a punishment? Are you there to punish? But again, what reinforcement are you going to do? Be it positive or negative. They may not be after you spanking them, but again, how much are you going to disapprove that? How much are you going to reward the other one? So whichever way you may do it, hear what we are saying is, you are in your own class, running it in the best way you would want. So remember, by the time you are arousing them to be so keen on a misbehavior happening somewhere, you could be putting yourself into a test. What test? Of being consistent in what you expect and accept. Yesterday she did this and you spanked her. Today she has done this. You have not spanked her. Teacher, uh, you have favorism. And I will tell you honestly, you have favorism. But even in high school, colleges and universities, where they may not outrage to tell you that you are in favorism, they will know it in themselves. And that is where you are parting ways you will start. So as a teacher, remember we said the very first uh, favorite aspect of the discipline will be so key again, just as a teacher's characteristic here. When you fail in what you expect and accept, that is when your trouble as a teacher will start. Gesturing, this is where you are using cues by any part of your body to mean exactly what you want to mean. In my case here, my interest is that you are warning a child. You are warning a learner against doing something that is not right. But mark here, as a teacher, we are people in a career of serious communication. Gesturing may be interpreted differently by various cultures in our country and even abroad. So whatever it is that you mean to do, whatever it is that you mean to communicate through a gesture, be very careful, be it that you are using your hands, be it that you are using even winking. If you wink to me in my culture, I won't expose it so much. But if you wink to me in my culture, it's all dependent on who are you. Would I be winking you and I'm a man and you are a she? Then that one will send a differently, totally different uh, message. So in this case, there is what you are communicating to these learners. Whatever message you want them to get, be very sure that is the one they are going to get. And remember, they are also coming from different cultures of their families, that is from their backgrounds. Whatever it is that you do in class, they go to reproduce it at home. What they reproduce at home, 
parents are there under the caregivers watching meaning whatever perception again that you could be sending at home will be telling the parent the kind of a caregiver they are trusting their children to or does that tell you it may even get to a point whereby as a teacher you may establish a certain culture of communication just as you have your culture on rewarding when i pick a pen and i do a star to every learner who is responding to my appointments correctly and they say i am master and the whole day they will be there i am master i responded correctly to the teacher at times i may even put it here to any other person it may be making them dirty but in my class according to my culture this is a star in fact this is a crown so i wouldn't have a lot of problems if you could come up with your own gestures in class whereby when you do this learners know according to our, our class culture the teacher means this the teacher means this that way even the communication is going to be easy that way even the conducive environment in the class is going to be enhanced because there will be less talking and there will be more communication so as a teacher we repeat talking is not communicating you may talk and talk but so long as you are not establishing a common understanding whatever you want to communicate is not what they are getting then you are just talking and to that extent you could be a noise maker and let alone a noise maker remember we are lesson officers we are linking these children from home to the school here where they are doing their learning and whatever it is that they are learning it is squarely being shaped by you as a teacher so in this case what i want to mean here is an ideal teacher facilitates learning are you the know it all in that class are you the know it all in that learning environment mm -hmm. whatever activities you are giving them to do are you the one who can do it the best or do you allow some diversity here and there about the learners who could do it differently Whatever ideas that you think are the ones that are going to enhance the acquisition of your objectives, must they be based on the activities you have weaved that will be done in the class? Or do you allow some diversity? An ideal teacher facilitates learning. Your interest is the acquisition of the concepts you want to teach them. So concerning your resources, concerning your methods of teaching and concerning everything let it center on why your objectives are achieved even one of them would come with some diversity remember even the parents at home they are our social capital most of these materials you would see with me here i'm not the one who have procured them so in this ideal class you realize whoever are the participants are even beyond our four walls of the classroom those parents out there even those donors out there those caregivers out there every one of them they have the experiences which they foster and instill in these children and the more you link whatever experiences they have with whatever you want to teach them in the classroom as a teacher you become all relevant you become all relevant and that is where you become effective you become ideal at times you are who you are by being your real you but when it comes to ideal you it means there you are as a teacher who is intending to improve on your skills every day who is intending to expand on your experiences every day who is intending to experience more from whom you can't see every day whatever it is that they may have to say they may not say it in the best way that you would prefer but if you give it a near you realize oh kumbe there is another way of doing it 
Listen to her now. Sing it again. There we go. Let's go her way. Consolation, consolation. If you want, you can name sensory organs. Ears, tongue, nose. What am I touching? Say the skin. So going by that, it is telling me that I only came with only one activity, a song. It was good maybe. I saw them get interested. But again, out of whatever it is that she has, she has given us another one. Meaning, I'm not a know-it-all teacher. I'm a teacher who facilitates learning, not a teacher who just teaches, just to realize this more output. Meantime, success teachers as you practice. Personally, I'm teacher Kamaubi, a teacher by choice. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era, and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.